I think many of the listeners will be thinking, how do I know that I'm in zone two? And there are a lot of different calculations online. There are running tests, there are lab tests, etc. How do you encourage people to think about this? Yeah, that's a great point. So I think that as 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 we're starting to look at exercise prescription for for the mass market and for for many people as opposed to just to elite athletes, right? We're going to see more and more exercise physiology or metabolic laboratories around the world, right? Uh, and, and in fact, it's happening, right? Until recently, uh, there were very few laboratories around the world who would, who did this test to specifically find out your training intensities, right? Based on heart rate or power output, right? Uh, and they were only for the elite athletes, right? And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and then, then now more and more are popping up around the world. And, uh, and people are not so scared to go to a laboratory because I remember when I started doing this, um, in the U.S. for health purposes, uh, with patients 15 years ago, people were scared because, uh, they say, Oh, I'm not, I'm not an elite athlete, right? Or they would see a cycling jersey or go not of a, of a runner's jersey on the wall and say, hey, I'm not one of those, right? No, but this is not about that, right? This is about you. And so anyways, that, 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 those laboratories and those testing, they're becoming more sophisticated. And people running those tests, uh, they're all more and more professionals. Before, there there are not that many professionals working in this area. And uh, people would go to their local university. And with all the respects to graduate and undergrad students, you know, they were seen and and, and tested by them, right? Now you see a lot of professionals who, they were undergrad or graduate students and become into this field, Right. Um, so that's on one hand, but, um, but there are people out there that they cannot find the place, right? Uh, there, there's no laboratory in their town or maybe it's too expensive and they cannot afford it. Right. So for those, um, and from my experience, right. Uh, I think that, um, the, 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 the breathing and talk test, it's a great way. Uh, and, and I'll explain it. So like, like when you and I, talk like this now, when you can um, uh, maintain a conversation like this, you're in your zone one, you're recovering, you're, you're not stimulating much, right? Zone two, uh, it would be um, like a, um, a hard conversation to, to maintain, right? If you, if, you, if, if you imagine yourself exercising with someone else, you could maintain a conversation, but it will be costly, right? You will be talking with some difficulty, but you could maintain it. Right, not for a long time, not 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 for one hour, because it would be, oh, too too uh, fastidious, right? But you could maintain it. That would be kind of what we see the results in the laboratory, and it kind of corresponds to that, right? And then uh, zone three would be a, a, an exercise intensity where it's it's very difficult to maintain a conversation, very difficult, just just exchange a few uh, phrases or a few words, right? Um, then zone four no conversation. That's it. You know, uh, maybe one word you can say, you know, and then some five and some six. Yeah. There's no, there's no possibility. Right. But I think that, and I honestly, and, and, and I know it might sound old school, but we have now, uh, watches and, and, and all these, uh, algorithms, you know, that gives us zones, you know, that, that the immense majority are, 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 are far away from, 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 uh, giving you the right intensities because, the, the, those algorithms are, are are not individualized yet. It, it'll it'll happen at some point, right? But at, at this point, I really think that the the, the, the talk and uh, test is much more accurate than the immense algorithms that you find out there in in all these brands telling you the training zones. So and it's easy to do. And and again, from my experience and the data, the hardcore data from laboratory, it's not that matches perfectly. But it, 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 it corresponds quite well. This episode is proudly brought to you by Inside Tracker. Track your blood biomarkers, understand your biological age, and receive personalized lifestyle tips backed by evidence to optimize your health. To get started with Inside Tracker today and get 20% off your first purchase, head to insidetracker.com forward slash Simon. That's insidetracker.com forward slash Simon for 20% off. You know, it's just worth us 
remembering that there are so many people living a sedentary lifestyle. So trying to remove barriers to just get people moving is is a great thing. And, and what you've just described there is really accessible to people. Are you a little bit puffy? Perhaps you have a little bit of sweat happening, but you can you can carry that conversation. If you were on the phone to someone, they would know you're exercising, but they could still have a bit of a conversation with you without it being uh, sort of too interruptive. And the good thing with that too is that as you get fitter, you can you can be displacing that intensity, right? So now maybe someone is sedentary and obese or overweight and maybe just just walking around the block, right? <sighs> might be tiring, right? But that might be the zone two, for example. But maybe in one year, that person can do like a, a brisk walk, right? And be at that same intensity, right? So that, that's what uh, you can guide yourself through this simple test, right? Which at the same time, this zone two intensity is it's something that's sustainable for life, you know? And, and, and again, I, I, I also say that any intensity will help. And you need, as we discussed, higher intensity to maintain your fitness and your glycolytic capacity. And obviously, we haven't talked about um, um, uh, resistance exercise, which is very important, right? And you know more than, than I do. Uh, uh, but the thing is like, yeah, it's just when, when, when it comes to both exercise and diets, you know, I, I always ask people who do these extremes, extremes exercise routines and extreme diets, and they have great results. The immense majority are just temporary because the immense majority go back to where they were. And when you ask them, can you do this for the rest of your life? The answer is no. So if you cannot do a, a, a diet or an exercise for the rest of your life, it's not going to work. So you need to have some sustainability both in your nutrition and both in your exercise. And when it comes to exercise, a zone two is something that anybody can, can do for the rest of their lives. You mentioned some of those algorithms and I think the most crude sort of calculations that are out there are uh, using max heart rate 220 minus age and then kind of just multiplying that out by the various intensities of the different zones and perhaps a, a step better, there's ca calculations like the Carvenin formula, which I'm sure you're familiar with, that uses heart rate reserve if if someone is going to go out and use a, a calculation out there, is the Carvenin sort of formula or a formula that's using heart rate reserve better than, than one that just uses max heart rate? Probably. Uh, but still, the thing is, and this is what I've also learned working with athletes uh, and also regular people, is that the, the, the heart rate response to exercise is so individual. You can have someone with the same uh, age, and uh, one's maximum heart rate might be 180, and the other one might be 200, right? Uh, or 160 and 200, right? Um, so, and, 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 and regarding the cardiac reserve, that could vary significantly also among individuals. So I think it's probably more accurate, right? But, uh, um, but I don't think there, we're not there yet uh, looking into, into these algorithms when it comes to heart rate uh, because it varies a lot. And I think that, again, it's one of the things it doesn't represent necessarily what happens at the cellular level. I think that um, uh, the, the, the future is, is going to come in the uh, uh, um, uh, biosensors where we're going to be, uh, we're working with one company with one biosensor already that we think is going to be a big deal at some point. But the biosensors that, they're, you know, kind of, People have now some glucose that if you're type 1 diabetes, it's, it's a game changer. If you're not, it's cool to, to see how your glucose goes up and down. Eventually, it's, it's physiology and metabolism 101. And eventually, yeah, it's just uh, you can get some education, but eventually you will not using it much because you're, you're, you're not type 1. But the more sophisticated bio, uh, biosensors are coming with more metabolites that come directly from your cells. And that's where you're going to be guiding um, uh, exercise in a much uh, specific way.